Hello to everyone and welcome to Gamification Diaries. Today I am going to host from all over the Mexico to one of my good friends from GameFed actually. Uh, his name is Bernardo Latif and he is a gamification expert in Mexico and we met in several times in all over the world I guess in New Orleans, in Berlin, in London and several places and he is a, he is a very good guy and we are going to talk about his gamification model and especially he called it gamification, Game Master uh, Gamification Framework how he developed it and how we can use it in our ex existing business areas like our schools or business and everywhere and he's a he's a right guy i think to talk about gamification hello to mustafa and he is a founder of jaga talks i guess and hopefully he is doing very well and a hi to everyone who already joined our sessions i'm super excited hello Ainur. hopefully you got also a uh, good day too and Bernardo is my friend is here over there and let's have him in our session the famous gamer of the world he is a founder of Bill Rabbit he is a creator of game master framework and he is my friend depends on everything yes there you go can Bernardo, you see me now? I can see you because I can't see you, see you. <laughs> Welcome to my sessions. Just, Give me a second, just... please. Oh, I, I was won't. trying to do everything I on the won't. computer. But... <laughs> Welcome to my show. Bernardo. Welcome. <laughs> there are many good guys Hello, here. Everybody. Hello, Vedat Hoja. Hello, Vedat Hoja. Vedat Hoja. Probably, if you met with Bernardo, you will love him. Let me say it this way. Bernardo is one of the best guys who already mix every gamification framework and create a good model for everyone. I know you are working on gamification model too. Hello to Ebrohoja. And we are going to wait for Bernardo. And he's on our sessions. And I think he's going to make a good presentation for us for our gamification diaries, which we started in 2020. And this is the 15th of gamification diaries today. And we are going to talk with Bernardo about Blue Rabbit and Game Master Framework. There you go. Now I can do everything better. Sorry. No problem. Can we see Hold us? On. Can Can I see you, my friend? Handsome guy? Yeah, you are still handsome. You are still handsome. I'm still handsome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, what's going I, on here? My... Can you can you turn your cam camera? No. Down? I think so. Yeah. There you go. Can no, you... I mean I, I'm actually flipping it with my hands. I'm trying to. Something is wrong with the app in the in my cell phone. There so you meanwhile, you're going to have to pay attention to, to something different. I think. If you can see your face, that will be much better for us. I know. I am trying that. <laughs> but apparently, uh, something... There you go. Shaiblaha. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my friend. How are you? Welcome. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. What's writing in your behind? In increase the engagement or something like oh, that. Oh, it's a little banner I put there so that you won't see my kitchen. Oh, home office. <laughs> yeah, beautiful home office for the past couple of years. We never have you in Turkey, but let's start with this way. Welcome to Turkey. Yay. Hello. We ha we, we, we... This is our community, and we are very, some of our guys is very expe ex uh, expecting you with, with high level because they love your job in Blue Rabbit <laughs> and Game Master Framework. And thank, thank you for you. your time, my friend. And without you, uh, gamification diaries. Without you, it can't be happening. No. Thanks oh, for your time. Um, thanks. You. Th thanks for the invite. I'm sorry, it was a little late and some technical difficulties, but we're finally live and let's no, kick no, this out. Any time you want to have no, me no. over, I'll be more than happy to to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Bernardo. I know that we met uh, in Madrid 
but I know we, we have, we, I, I still remember in New Orleans, you know, they, everyone just celebrating, you know, after GameCon, just two guys are still talking about gamification, you and me. <laughs> still um, looking at the cards and what else should we do? Oh no, you don't, this, you, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, a, it, 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 su such is the, 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 the precious time we get when the, the, the little time we get to be in person, we have to take advantage of that and talk as much as we can about it. I even remember that you said that we wanted, uh, that this year I might uh, join you guys in, in, in Ganfe Turk, uh, sorry, in, um, well, in, in Turkish gamification event, yeah. uh, and the um, gamification meetup, sorry. Yeah. And um, everything was awesome and fantastic. I was like, yeah, I was super excited about it. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> Yeah, we 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 five of them. I, I, we couldn't do this in the in June, and we try to do it in online. Hopefully next month. So mm -hmm. I don't, I think the COVID changed every game plan. <laughs> yeah, it it actually it it definitely changed um, a lot of what we were expecting. And um, well, Blue Rabbit has evolved a lot uh, since then. So yeah. How is how is Mexico going? You are you are over there. We're not in Mexico anymore. We have now moved into Miami, and that's also part of the of the huge changes that we've had uh, in the past uh, days. Well, in the past two months, so we're now living in Miami uh, as of June third. Oh, cool! Congratulations. How is Miami then? Uh... It's cool. It's crazy weather, so you get a very shiny, sunny day. And then within three seconds, you get this huge storm and then suddenly the sun's back up again. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Cool. But the, yeah. So let's, let's, start, let's start with the, uh, my first question. It's very exciting. And yes. I, I asked question, I asked same question to even you, Kai, even Andrej, everyone, I mean. Okay. okay. So when you heard, can you remember when you heard the word of, gamification for a first time and how you decided to involve more? Well, the first time I heard the word gamification was from one of my students when I was a high school teacher. And um, his exact words were, I know how to fix education. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, right. And he said gamification and he was not wrong. Um, so I got, I dived um, I dove into it head on straight. I mean, no parachute, no nothing. It was a matter of life-changing decision within 40 minutes. It's part of actually some of the things that I've um, talked about in, 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 in my talk uh, from player to professional, how after watching Jesse Shell's um, Dice talk uh, back in two th his talks from 2010. This was around 2011. I never remember the the, the very set. Uh, so, I mean, I think that he the the talk he 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 uh, he gave the talk in 2010, but I watched it in 2011, early 2011. Maybe maybe it was 2010. I don't know. But what I do know is that after he explained how to become a game designer, that you just have to stand up and say, I am a game designer, and then that was it. That was for me, that's the life-changing moment for me. Um, I decided right then and there that I wanted to do this for a living because I am a, game, uh, I am a dungeon master. I love playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons. I have a group of friends who, who love playing War, uh, World of Darkness, and uh, we used to play a lot of role-playing games. And I kept thinking the world should be uh, like this, the the world should uh, be having. A... It's wrong. Sorry, that. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, the the world should be able to experience education, is to experience work, to experience life like this. And then when the world gamification got here, uh, got into my life, I was overwhelmed. I was like, yes, yes, now I can do this. So so um, I don't know what to do. So. I did what I've always done when something, when I get passionate about something. So I started reading uh, and I started uh, learning every single thing I could about it. And that's, that's how it all started for me. It was a five second conversation with a student. Um, 
and it became my my way of life and i mean it is my way of life i mean seriously yes <laughs> yes I, i never met a person like you do you do uh, <laughs> take the old game vacation with his all life you know in somehow uh, congratulations yeah. i think uh, I, i always give an example to the existing turkish teachers and also entrepreneurs who wants to build their application uh, you are a teacher you were a teacher and you saw the uh, opportunity and you started to build your own platform that's huge effort uh, i mean better the congratulations so um i i still remember in 2015 i was in madrid and you were there too and you still uh, develop the blue rabbit and uh, maybe we should talk about first blue rabbit right uh, not game master framework you <laughs> started to build uh, the blue rabbit game fight engagement platform for teachers right now for everyone actually Can you tell us a little bit more about Blue Rabbit, how you decided to do and how you implement it? So, um, after I did all of this standing up and I tried to become a game designer and everything, right after that, um, what happened is uh, I started using um, different notebooks to kind of gamify my classes. So, I, I actually still have that notebook uh, somewhere in that uh, shelf right there. But um, what happened is what it, it was way too chaotic and way too complicated for, for me to, to, to follow through the players. So um, what, what I did is I designed it exactly as I would design uh, a campaign in Dungeons and Dragons. So I, brought up, I, I even brought my dice and everything. I started working with it. And then I, when I realized that my uh my players were dumping so much information uh, into me that i was not going to be able to keep track of i said well uh, we need some uh, some sort of a system so i built up a website and um where they would uh, see all the different projects that were available but they had to submit everything over email so i opened up a Google Doc with Excel so they could track their progress and all their points in there. Uh, but it was still a passive system where they would have to wait for me to update stuff based on what they submitted. On, until that had happened, then I wouldn't be able, I mean, they, they, um, they wouldn't see the results or they wouldn't get any feedback. So um, that's when I said, okay, let's just go with it. Let's see what happens. So I started creating Uh, different versions in uh, WordPress, um, in the WordPress blog that I had. And um, it, w it was pretty interesting how um, it, at the beginning you would go into the back end of WordPress and you would find the different things that you would have to do. You would see the post of a, blo uh, of a blog in, in, in WordPress and you click and present your project and then you would have loved stuff there. Uh, and then That generated a database, the, the database of the things that they had submitted, but I still had to assign the points manually to the player. So I started developing over, over time, and uh, by 2014, I ended up with the first completely front-end public version of an automat uh, automatic gamified system where the players were able to submit something, get the points and progress, and get to themselves locked, unlocked, and different access. Um, so it, it took me about three to four years to get to that point where I was able to, to develop a platform. And once the platform was, was like that, was successful, was already running, um, uh, that's when I uh, met my, my partner, Adrian, my business partner, Adrian, and um, I met him after uh, going to G Summit in San Francisco for the second time. Uh, and he saw the platform I had and he said, you know what, we should meet. He is also Mexican and everything. And I was like, hey, yeah, sure, why not? Where do you live? One block away from my house. <laughs> we went all over the planet and met in San Francisco. He had just came back from Brazil. He used to live there. And uh, we found each other and we lived one block away from each other. It was insane. I, I couldn't believe that. And um, we started working together, and uh, that's when I told him, I want to make a business out of this. I know that there's a lot of teachers out there that need help, that they need this software 
to, to, to upgrade their classes and to transform the world of education. I'm done with grades. I'm done with tolerating uh, lame classes. I am done with seeing uh, people paying huge tuition fees for, for their students and uh, for, sorry, for, for, for their own kids and, and not getting valuable experience. I mean, I've always said that the tuition fee should be proportional to how much or how eager uh, uh, um, a person is, is willing to go to school. So if you wake up in the morning and you're like, yeah, I don't want to go, you should not be paying that school. But if they wake you up and they want to go to school and they're like, hey, take me to school now because something big is happening, then you should pay every single penny you have because that's how it should feel. You know education is wrong when, you, when the kids wake up early on the weekends and late on the weekdays. You know that, that work is wrong when that happens too. You're eager to wake up on, sa on a Saturday to go on a jog or to, or to go to, to camping or to go to do something that's not your job, but you're not willing to wake up early to do the job. So that is wrong. We should not live like that. So after I talked to, to Adrian, he was like, okay, he, he's really serious about this. So we started working towards making this a good business. And um, two years later, I quit my job as a teacher. I took the jump. It was a huge jump. Uh, that year, I met you uh, for the first time in 2016 in, in, in Gamification World Congress. And the next year is 2017 when the Gamification World Congress was canceled last call. You remember that? Yeah. But fortunately, um, everything went smooth. I was at the end of my rope by, uh, by November. I had no money. I had to ask uh, money to, uh, to my dad to pay my rent. Uh, my wife was like, you know, we gave it two years to see if this could be a business and everything. I, was like, I know. And I went to Gamification Europe with a little bit of, you know, maybe this is the last time I can do something like this. And then the absolutely unexpected happened, which is that we were awarded with the outstanding gamification software. And uh, after that, we got seven. I, I'm seriously talking overnight. I, I posted it on Facebook. And when I woke up the next morning, I had seven investment offers from seven different people who wanted to make Blue Rabbit a business. They said, okay, so he really has something here. And we've been working with our backs bent <laughs> over themselves for the past years. But um, thanks to that uh, event, Blue Rabbit is still alive. And yes, that's more or less the little bit of story. That's how it all started. And that's where we're at right now. We moved a little bit away from, from uh, using it just for education. Now it works both for education, uh, um, e-learning, and uh, for gamifying events. So you can use it in any, any place you want. Um, it works the exact same because it turns out that uh, a conference like, um, uh, uh, the, like the gamification Game meetup Con. in Turkey, like Gamicon, like, um, like Gamification Europe last year, uh, or uh, many others that we have, uh, Gamify, uh, are the exact same thing as a class. It's, it's really weird, I mean, because all, all you have to do is if you pay attention to a convention or to a, to, to a conference, you have 18 classes packed up, backed up one after the other for just Speakers three days. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's the same thing. It, yeah. it's, the, it's the same process. Yeah. So you have a, a, an amazing experience and uh, it improved and increased participation. Our, on our first event, we run it with 400 students we had to compete with the, the event had to compete against the beach. I'm not competing against simple things. They were paid 400 students around Mexico were paid to go to a convention on the beach. <laughs> no one goes to this, to the talks and to the, to the events of the convention. They all go to the beach. We had 77% engagement on our first try with blue rabbit uh, in 2018. It was a huge success. We, we, people were super happy. Everybody was asking, how did you do this? Who was the, who had this idea? This had, this was an amazing thing. So since then we've been having very successful experiences um, and very successful gamified uh, events for, for our participants. Thanks to, thanks to you. I mean, your passion is, uh, I oh, very thank important you. For, 
behind Blue Rabbit because, you, you know, in, even in Turkey, there are many gamification platforms, actually, but, uh, you know, uh, the Blue Rabbit journeys is, is it, uh, because of your passion. Uh, I think it's thanks to your... Thank uh, you. Thanks to your, your, your time, your effort. I, I think it's, it still looks like very gamified, but behind of it, there's many science uh, efforts and uh, maybe six nights. Uh, you got <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I always show the Blue Rabbit to some uh, startups in Turkey. During the day. Teacher, we want to make a, a gamified platform. There are many ways. There are many ways to have to follow. You know, you, you should follow Bernardo. I always give them a reason. So I'm going to ask you about, you, you were a teacher and what um, what's, um, what I know, I, I remember your presentation in Brighton. Uh, you didn't mention about uh, too much about uh, Blue Rabbit, but uh, the mistakes in the classroom. So yeah. many, many, many followers of mine in Turkey, they are actually teachers. So can you give us, uh, without, with and without Blue Rabbit, can you give some advice to teachers to how they can gamify their existence classroom? So um, the, the trick to it is, uh, on that presentation, what I was trying to say is, don't, mix, don't make these 10 mistakes I made every day. So um, the, the talk was called, um, how not to gamify a classroom. Uh, because to gamify a classroom, you have to, it's, it's fairly easy. You create your narrative, you give the players a sense of progression, feedback, and you ensure that there's a perfectly clear goal on what needs to be achieved. Everything else we add to it, every single other detail is extra. As long as you keep the goals clear, there's feedback and the players know where they are at, every, at all times, they are gonna do it. But if you add a compelling narrative, if you add a specific enemy that's, uh, that's uh, attacking you, or if you add uh, hit points, or you get energy points, or you get, I don't know, any other element or game mechanic that you can think out, out there. Uh, maybe they can hire, the, the students can hire each other to solve problems, or you have some teamwork, everything. All of that is extra. And um, yeah, you can see, I, I will send you the updated uh, version of, of that image. Um, it's, it's basically the, the same theory, but uh, you can add as many game mechanics as you want, as long as you don't make those, those, those mistakes, uh, which are limiting the players, for instance. Uh, they they want to grow as much as possible. I mean, everybody wants to, one of the principles in Dungeons and Dragons is that everybody should have a chance to shine. So you spend a lot of time designing a character with, correct, with, with special traits and, and special things, um, I, I'll, I'll give you some examples from Elita Kilseka. Sorry, I don't know Turkish, but I will give some examples in a, in a bit. But um, so the, the, the thing is that every player has a story behind themselves. Every single player thinks they are the hero of the story. And when you design experiences in, in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you have to make sure that every player shines and you will have a sorcerer you will have a wizard and then you will have a fighter and you will have a, bar a barbarian and then you will have a cleric so everybody has different profiles and they expect to be using their abilities at some point and ensuring that those uh, abilities shine hey i saved the day because i used the healing spell in the right player at the right time and that is the the very um uh, key to understanding uh, how to to ensure that your players are there and, and, and feel excited all the time. The story is not just about one player, it's about all the players. They all have to feel heroes of their stories. So that's where it gets hard. How do I make a story where everybody is the hero? And it's not as hard as you may think as long as you give them a goal and ensure that there's feedback and they, they can progress through it. So if you limit their possibilities, that's the one thing that the, the one mistake I made, the, the very first one, that's where the players were like, oh, I just finished. Open that. The, when, when they feel there's a limit to it, they drop everything because they're done. 
and learning is never over. You cannot learn. You, you cannot stop learning. That's that's uh, part of our, that's actually our our slogan right now. It's never stop learning because your brain will never stop learning. You cannot be less today than you were yesterday. There's no way unless you have some severe trauma to your head and there's something physically wrong with your brain, you will every single second of every single day try to create a new neural network. So do not limit your players. On the contrary, allow them to grow and grow and grow. So that's why, that's kind of some of the, of the, the, the points where I, I started uh, with. I'm trying to find the, the keynote because I, I really want to, um, show you a com com of, um, a, a couple of things uh, from that, uh, a, a couple of tips from that. And m many of those tips are actually being just a great teacher. That, um, kind of remember those great teachers that you hold dear in your heart and you say, I remember them forever. I will be a hundred years old and I will still remember that teacher from middle school who taught me this little secret about something because that day he connected or she connected with you. And that, that's a trick. So, uh, so uh, another, an another thing is that players should not be treated as students. They should be treated as professionals. So they, they should feel like what they do affect the world they are. And we're working right now on the development of um, a very specific workshop that we will be releasing for GamiCon online this year. Uh, in, we're going to have this in October. And um, th this, uh, this is specific, uh, it's not exactly a framework, it's more like our um, own engagement loop. And uh, in this engagement loop, one of the things that we say is that the, you start with a prompt or, or you ask something to the players. There's a decision to be made. Then the player takes some, some action. That action uh, gives some feedback to the player. And that has to have a consequence. If there is no consequence to the actions, we know this. If you are, I mean, maybe 20 years or older and you don't live in, a, in one of the top countries in the world, you know that most of the time what we complain in politics is that there is no consequences to the actions of people. In Mexico, we struggle with this every day. It's like uh, uh, somebody robs you and there's no consequence to the actions. You cannot do anything about it and you're frustrated about it. And that's exactly what happens. People know that the system allows them to cheat because there is no consequence to the actions. But if you structure it in a way that whatever they do affects the world and there's feedback following back to them, and if they do good, they get good, and if they do bad, they get bad back, then that's going to change completely their behavior in the classroom. And if I may be passionate about it and a little uh, and dream a little bit about it, we know that what happens in the classroom will become what happens in life in the future. So if you start looping them into this, do something, get something from it, do something, get something from it, they know that their actions have consequences. They do not feel like the student who doesn't know everything and the teacher knows everything. So. It, it is important that what they do affects the world they live in. So that, I would say that's, that's one of the most uh, important things to do. Um, there are many other things that we could talk about, but we only have a couple of minutes. <laughs> but I could talk about this for days, and I'd love to do it. So, and yeah. also people can easily find your talks in Gamification Europe. Uh, yes. Your YouTube channel. I think that they can uh, watch it more deeply. And also, uh, I'm going to ask, I believe that the, the, it also for classroom, uh, the games and gamification will change all experience in future with digital way. So you decided to implement the Blue Rabbit with that. So I'm going to ask about uh, the Game Master Framework. So I know that yes. Blue Rabbit is uh, running on top of this framework, but I love that. Congratulations, first of all. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't even um, think about it. I never saw any example. Uh, of this uh, work, actually, uh, Bernardo, congratulations for that. Because what my, my main questions for everyone, include you, Kaicho, Gabe Zikerman, Mirai, um, so if you if you think about it, you are a worker in a company and you want to gamify your hiring or I don't know, trainings or whatever, sales, marketing. If you go to the, some uh, companies, for example, if you like to take some 
consultancy about mind mapping or design thinking kind of methodologies. You know, they are all methodologies, right? They are all same mm -hmm. if you go to the A, B, C. But if you want to <laughs> use gamification, if you go to the A company, they offer some methodologies, you know, call, calling, you can call whatever you like. If you go to the yes. B, B companies, they just find their own way, their own explanation and everything. So I, I think uh, there are some um, main struggle of gamification that we cannot scale healthy to every company that because of that framework doesn't exist. I always use D6 model to explain to what is gamification, uh, the Kevin Werner yes. model. Uh, but when you implement it, it, when you try to implement it in a real way, there is, I cannot use any model. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, use hook model, use MEGO Kim player's journey and add the hooks phases and try to take game mechanics from you guys of Thursday's model because they yeah. are eight. So there is some, um, we need some vault run, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe this game master framework could be uh, the vault run too. Can you tell us a little bit about this framework, how you develop it? Well, uh, I was struggling ex exactly with what you're saying. I was uh, having a lot of issues with uh, every framework out there does something, let, let's say every framework will do 80% of everything, but that additional 20% you have to take from the other one, on the other one. And, and uh, I felt like I ended up um, a little short on every proposal we, we had. So the, the, the objective for, for the Blue Rabbit gamification, the, the, the Blue Rabbit Game Master framework was find a way where you can integrate all frameworks together and, and find, a, uh, f find a common ground. So the, the first things that we did, that, that I did was, okay, I, I've read pretty much every single gamification book out there. Maybe I'm missing only uh, Mario Herger's book, uh, books, but I've read almost all his wiki and, and I have a lot of information in my head and I was, okay, so I know that Kevin Werbach on his very first book, he explained this uh, starting six dynamics. Do they work? Do I like them? Are there many others? There are far too many game dynamics or game mechanics or, or frameworks to, to say these are the only ones, but which are the ones that you know from Dungeons and Dragons that I, I, I cannot um, express and, and stress this enough, Dungeons and Dragons has been my guide for all the time because they have been doing gamification for life for the past 45 years. They do it much better than anybody else. They just don't do it outside a gaming environment. They do it inside their own universe, inside a game, and they don't do it for a company, for a business, or for a marketing agency. So I said, okay, how do they start? Let's structure it in the best way possible. So you do not need the, the Blue Rabbit platform to use the Game Master framework. That was the very first thing. I know that you want to sell and you want to do make money and stuff, but we don't need that. We need to make sure that people know how to build the gamification experience. So the first thing is we need to define the dynamics, that the main elements, the, the most basic components of the system that will not change and that are the common ground. And that's the brown part in the center of the circle on the image that you have in your background. So once you define these six dynamics, then you can move over to start working with the activities that you want to gamify. If you do not define the first dynamics, then you do not know what you're working with. And the, the dynamics basically will tell you, okay, I want to set up a, a grass field with a soccer ball in the middle, and I want to make sure that there's going to be two teams facing each other, and then we're going to have uh, a goal on each side. That's basically what you're doing with the dynamics. The mechanics will tell you if you want to use your hands, if you're going to use your feet, if the players can use different t-shirts or, or everybody has to use the same t-shirt and, and how many people will, will do other stuff. We know that, I mean, the definition of the mechanic is something where you input something, the system process that, that input and then gives you an output. So it's, it's, it's very well defined in the um, mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics framework that you can find online. You can read all about it and, and ensure that the mechanic you're using follows the right procedure. 
and dynamics are usually defined as verbs and actions that the players will do. Uh, I don't exactly always do that. I, I, I'm more about the things that you have to put in place to ensure that you will build a, a successful system. And those six dynamics within my framework can change to any dynamic that you find online. So all you do is that you start with your first six dynamics. We propose six, and these six dynamics are um, uh, environment, uh, narrative, um, progression, uh, win state, um, relationships, and boundaries. And we found that 95% of the time, if those six things aren't defined, you're going to be in, a, in trouble. So that's how I started. And then I divided the uh, mechanics into 12 different categories. And these categories, two each correspond to each uh, dynamic. So you have a narrative can be told in a storyline or it can be told as objectives. You can have the, envir uh, sorry, the, the boundaries could be limited by time and space. And I didn't want to make many more um, categories about it. But then the mechanics I put in place, you can found, find mechanics in Yukai's framework. You can see the latest book from um, Monica Cornetti. She just mapped 160 game mechanics. I think Andrzej has, uh, Andrzej Marczewski has 140. Uh, Anne Coppens has somewhere 190 game mechanics built. And many of them are the same, and many of them are completely independent from each other. And there's absolutely no way I can think about every possible game mechanic in the planet. But there is, I am 100% sure that you can categorize your mechanics within these boundaries. And by doing that, you will start finding, okay, I'm setting up these mechanics here and there, and then I can uh, set them up from every framework, and I can use them for every possible activity. So the steps to using the Game Master framework are, are, are pretty easy. Define your dynamics, those six dynamics, there's a definition and questions to make it simple for you. You have to be, be sure that you answer those six questions as easy and as simple as possible. And then start defining a list of activities. Once you set your activities, you start connecting the activities to which part of the dynamic they match. So if it's an activity that should be matched with the narrative, then you define a mechanic to affect that activity, not the other way around. And this is one of the principles that we took out from Dungeons and Dragons. The rules serve you, not you serve the rules. This means the rules have to adapt to what you need. You do not need to adapt yourself to the rule because then you will be stuck. And then you are tr you're dealing with human behavior there are things that cannot be controlled uh, and many things. You, you do not know how much a player learns or knows before they get into, <laughs> into your system, but you can control the outcome of the input and the output. So uh, that, that's where you start defining your activities first before you start putting all the mechanics in. I want to use a progress bar. Yeah, and what are you going to measure? Why are you measuring that? And why, why aren't you measuring this other thing? Why aren't you measuring the most crucial activity in the system? Yeah, 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 but the progress bar show points. Yeah, but that's not the goal. The goal is to provide a specific uh, goal that you have to conquer or, 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 or the biggest mission. And, and, and it doesn't matter if there's a progress bar or not. It matters whether the player has a clear uh, definition of what they have to do. And maybe the progress bar uh, solved the issue in LinkedIn back in the day but maybe the, the progress bar won't solve it now. Maybe what you need is just changing the words of what you're asking. Maybe what you need to do is adding, uh, uh, it's not a progress bar, but it's adding the stages or adding levels, or, or maybe you need to uh, add a competition to ensure that the players start pulling each other. Maybe you have to set people into a mentoring system that will uh, force them to teach the other players who are newer to the system. So it's, it's not just that. You have to make sure that your dynamics and your activities are there first. You know where you want to get. You yourself, the game master, has to know where the goal is before everybody else. And you have to make sure that there are activities and mechanics that will, uh, activities that will get you there and mechanics that will make it engaging to get there. That's the trick. 
the last part of it, the, the outer circle of the framework, are the testing frameworks. Hey, you want to ensure that you have good rewards. You want to ensure that you're tackling all the types of players. You want to make sure that you're uh, focused on the core components, the relatedness, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. You want to ensure that the, the four keys to phone are there. And if you find there's other frameworks out there that you can build into it to test that your design is going in the right direction, then you can put them there. And you test it as you build it, not the other way around. You make sure that you're considering all these points that people far smarter than me have built in the past. And if they have built all of this, then why do we have to reinvent the wheel? We have to use it, but we have to have a structure to make sure that we can test it and use it. And that's what I wanted to propose with the Game Master Framework. A system, kind of like what you said, this Voltron that will incorporate the basics of everybody out there and make sure that we follow these steps in order and make sure that we cover all frameworks that I find compelling or, I, or, or that I like at the same time. So th that's more or less what, what, what I expected. With it. That's kind of like a really quick and, and oversimplified explanation. Um, there is a, a video of me explaining the, the Game Master framework in GameCon last year. I, I will share with you the link so that you can also share it with your followers uh, because that, that's also, a, uh, it's a longer explanation and I can share with you uh, some additional details on how to use it and how to build it uh, from our website. Of course, of course. For your information, we, we are going to our community, uh, going to add Turkish subtitle uh, on this video after this session, Bernardo, and we will put on YouTube. Uh, so people can uh, search your name or Game Master Framework, for example. They okay. can watch this video uh, in, in, in English and Turkish subtitles. So that will be very <laughs> insightful awesome. for us. Yeah. And also I like the, 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 the subs from Gabe Zikerman, Hexad from Andres, and Safta Time Nation, and Nicole Lazaro. You know, I, I use the same, almost same uh, methodologies. That's for uh, creating a good uh, gamification design. So congratulations yes. that you, you collect everything inside this framework. It's very useful. So uh, I'm going to ask you about a little bit your projects. Right now, what kind of project you are uh, using? I mean, it could be, I know the game con and event part, but maybe you are working for sales companies or others. And yeah. uh, how you develop that? Um, well, uh, unfortunately, I cannot name the names of the companies themselves uh, because beautiful NDAs. Um, I, I still have to get some get some release from from the people in in their legal departments. But um, we we have worked for a very big technology company and gamifying their training for um, the, their training conference. We've done this. Uh, over seven times now. And this year we were, we were going to gamify a 15, uh, 1,500 people event uh, here in this, in, well, it was going to be in Canada, but COVID canceled and they changed it into an online, uh, a completely online event. We also, that was our eighth um, gamification with them. Uh, we've gamified um, also teachers conventions. Uh, we've gamified the students conventions. We've gamified uh, students' classrooms, and um, a, a com we have one of our clients is a robotics school, and uh, we've successfully gamified the whole uh, their whole program, and they now have moved into an online um, uh, learning system because of COVID, schools are are cancelled. So we we found a um, they found a way to use Blue Rabbit to gamify and added a little bit of engagement on it. Um, so, yeah, um, basically we're working on that. And we are running um, a, a new completely, uh, a new complete gamification solution for a bank. Um, it's a huge bank uh, where th we're training them in compliance and cybersecurity. We are not obviously building the content. We are just providing the platform and providing the consultancy to ensure that the players will get engaged. So we built the narrative, we built the, the, whole, uh, the whole story, the whole experience, and uh, we ensure that the content they, they have to get, provide to the clients, sorry, pro provide to the um, uh, employees is, is in place. And um, because if they don't get this training 
uh, right then and there they could be uh, they, they could get a fine from the government for up to three million dollars so yeah that, that's a huge responsibility that we have on our shoulders and we're working with them uh, right now so yeah that's that's more or less where we're at now that's that's very insightful thank you and also yeah. I'm going to ask about communities and events I mean you are a very popular figure on uh, our community uh, and you already you. been many events and how you find uh, the communities and also what is the future of events actually you are part you are some part of Gamecon I know that yeah. they are going to be online in 2020 uh, and I know Gamification Europe also will be uh, we, we got Pete in our session and Gamification Europe also yeah. will be held on online uh, so for 2020 we are going to be online but what is the next big steps for Gamification communities for events and people um, so I think that the future of, of of events will present this is something we're actually working on right now for uh uh it's it it involves the gaming con conference we're working with the um, uh, we will be working with still we're still in, in between talks and trying to to solve all of this um we're we're negotiating because, still because because i remember sorry because i remember the, from new orleans you know you Uh, you said to me, "How many books be be left? All to you know. You got, you got, you know. You you were giving rewards to people. You know. You are still trying to check the platform and check the uh, rewards because sometimes <laughs> so, it's not easy to think that you cannot predict to the players. You know. So it's it's a little bit hard things that you are doing in Gamecon and give my love to uh, Monica and his uh, boyfriend." And that's that's what they are doing is amazing. Um, thanks to yeah. your efforts, it's already gamified too. Game yeah. on. So yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy thing to gamify even uh, event, you know. No, no. Um, what, what I was going to say is that we're we're working with a training magazine uh, to who are part of Gamicon and. Uh, they are asking if there's a way to gamify their, uh, an event that they're going to have on in February, and um, we're we're still trying to figure it out and and see how 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 this could work. Uh, but what what we're looking at is companies more and more are moving to a kind of a hybrid uh, type of of event. Um, We we can no longer thanks to COVID everything is changing and it's really complicated and uh, what's happening with the online events is that offering rewards become really tricky because how do you give I don't know a book to a person who is in the other side of the planet and then uh, how do you take that um, how, how do you ensure I mean it's going to be more expensive to send the book over than to to the, the actual cost of the book. So maybe you share a digital version of it, but if you share a digital version of it, then they can share it with anybody else, and then uh, you're not actually, you know, selling books. So uh, I, I think that the rewards are becoming tricky in online events um, uh, versus uh, what what a live event would be. And uh, g- gamifying events is not easy at all, and and gamifying gamification conference is even harder because people are expecting a lot more uh, engagement, and and you never know what's gonna come come around, but. Um, I, I, what I was trying to say is that if if companies figure out a way to to combine live events and uh, uh, and uh, well, live events and online events at the same time, where people can uh, connect and watch the event live at the same time as being there, which is something that very big companies and very big conferences used to do. Uh, we're gonna show this online, like maybe the E3 when they were showing uh, all the the transmission. It was a huge thing, but but imagine that everybody could be connected, working together towards achieving that specific goal that the whole conference is is trying to reach. Instead of just me getting a reward, how about we all together uh, trying to solve a huge technological issue or a huge. Uh, I don't know uh, conflict or or maybe trying to save the planet. I don't know something yeah. huge behind it, and um, I think that's the hardest thing to do uh, when gamifying an event. Uh, it's finding common ground for everybody to join in and, and work together to 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 reach some of a uh, a common narrative. 
uh, because it's not easy, as you said, you, you could remember, uh, you have to be paying attention on the amount of points everybody's getting, you have to make sure that the, the item shop is actually being balanced and you're giving the, the, the rewards for the right amount of money and you're not getting somebody who gets every single price and everything has to be separated and you can only get this certain amount of prices so that everybody feels it's fair to get the other price. So it, it, it again, when you start with your center and you start growing from, from it, you will get there, you will find the balance uh, around it, but you have to make sure that there's some, um, I don't know, uh, the exact word, everybody has to be able to get something out of it. Even if, it, if it's not something physical, they have to get something out of it that they didn't have outside from the learning experience. They have to, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen because I found this thing. I was commenting in Twitter so much that I got all my notes from the event thanks to this uh, gamification solution. Or I found that uh, there's a lot more people interested in this, that, because I saw their pictures from their houses and, and, and in their homes you could all see that they had this little Harry Potter thing in the back and then I could relate to more people in this conference or this sales conference or everything. So, um, I mean, gamifying GamiCon and, and Gamification Europe are the, the hardest challenges because people expect more than, than usual. But um, for other experiences where we have to sail, uh, we, we have to engage with salespeople, it's, uh, the hard part of it is that they are so competitive that they just want everything to happen to them and everybody wants the price. And usually what you do is you, you get from the total amount of people who register in the system and start using it, you only get about 25% in high engagement. In, in, and when I say high engagement, I mean uh, doing over 70% of all the activities available, uh, being very competitive and, and, and just fighting for the prices. In sales conventions, you get 70% of people in that high level of engagement. So you have 200 people, 140 people are complaining that they only had three attempts on a quiz and, and that they want one more because they know they can take it the next time and they can get the rewards and, and it's like, oh my God. So um, figure out how to solve the, all, all of that and it, it has been tricky, but I think that's, that has been w one of the most rewarding experiences for us uh, because in the end, um, we want to make Blue Rabbit as uh, standalone as possible to make sure that the players have all the information and all the feedback as clear as possible on their end. So they, there is no questions. So, and um, one of the beauties of the rabbit is that it collects everything, every attempt, every, uh, every blink of the player, every jump, everything is there. So there was, uh, I remember there was this time with one of these uh, people inside the, the big uh, tech company um, they started complaining that the system took their chance away. And when you went into the system and see that the first attempt was at 8 p.m. and the next attempt was at 10 p.m. and you could see what they answered, all I did was, yeah, right. Uh, so I just, I, I see that you have this. Did you not attempt this at 8 p.m.? No answer, no reply, <laughs> no nothing. It was like they tried to trick you. They kind of complain because they just want to whine about it and then suddenly they realize they cannot complain about it because the system is tracking everything they were like okay i have to take it seriously and while you will have a lot of complaints at the beginning they stop complaining about it and it's the exact same effect that i had in the classroom when the when the students saw that they didn't, they didn't have an option, that, that I was not trying to cheat over them, that I was not lying, this was not fake, they will do something and they will get the points immediately or not. They were like, we cannot trick this guy. I increased classroom engagement 800%. And that's how we have been so successful with Blue Rabbit in our events because it's kind of the, the, the whole point of it. Well done. I mean... When we are talking to each other, I remember New Orleans right now. It's one hour already we got past. Yep. You know? 
I think uh, talking with you, with gamification, uh, Bernardo, it's a great way to give and a flow zone. And thanks for your all experience. And uh, I think we got three or four minutes left for one hour. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's how we just, I said, maybe we can remember in New Orleans. It was a two hour we talk and Monica said, wow. hey, guys, please let, do a networking, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy that too much, man. And just last word from you to give, give some advice to young fellas, the Turkish fellas and everyone um, watching so, this later. Okay, so Ali asked me to give an example of the classroom, of what, what did I do in my class. And the one thing we did is we turned it into a marketing agency where the players will have to build something for a different uh, class or a different department in the school. Even if it was r real or not, we invented that people in the science class were asking for something from your classroom and that gave the players purpose. And it became kind of like a, a um, uh, how, how do you say this? Uh, kind of like a, a, a nice competition between the players as some sort of rivalry because they were competing and the best design or the best designs were going to be chosen to be printed and posted in the classes. And we actually did that. Remember, there has to be real consequences. And uh, just by turning them outside from students and into, um, into professional freelance designers that worked for an agency and they were getting paid for every work they did and those, that money used, was used to pay for the grade, that was a blast. That was beautiful. So I would say that's a good that, that would be the, the, the best example I can give you. Use that to build a good narrative, something simple, Make your players do something for somebody else, and they're going to love it. Thanks for your time, and thanks for your passion, my friends, for all <laughs> community and all world to understand deeply to gamification. And, and hopefully, after pandemic, you know, see you yeah. in, a, in a good way, and hopefully have you in Turkey and get yes. more involved with the communities. Thanks for your time, Bernard, and have a safe journey to GameCon, and enjoy your time yes. with Monica's, and give my love to them, okay? Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. May the force be with you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.